This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble and in about a half hour from now we'll go to our Citizens panel and uh, this show goes on until midnight Eastern Standard Time but uh, before we do that, it's, uh, you know, then we like to check in with a friend of ours and we do it in the, uh, well, well, you'll find out here, listen. Okay, what we're going to do is what we always do with our good friend Stephen Pearl, we sneak up on him. Okay, thusly. Let me start dialing the phone here. There we go. There goes the phone. Wow. Does it several different ways to get to the telephone. So I'm reading this book called Shortstop in the Pumpernickel, and I have this uncontrollable urge to throw a rock at Pete Best. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> See what I just did? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, you've been a wonderful audience. How you Thank do- you very much. You've been a wonderful one. A wonderful one person. How you doing, Steve? Audi-i. How you, How you doing? Good. What's up? Yeah, I'm well. I'm going good. How you doing? Happy, you can say, happy New Year. You can say Happy New Year until January 14th. After that, if you say it, the per- it gets obnoxious, and the person you say it to has the right to hit you in the face with a big, smelly, dead fish. But until January 14th, you can say Happy New Year. Let's see, this will be on before the 14th. So, Happy New Year, Steve. Happy New Year! All that stuff, yes. Happy New Year to you, my friend. You know, there was a time when Guy Lombardo was Mariah Carey. So, uh... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they couldn't... There'd be no more than people said when he die, when he dies, he's taking New Year's with him, and that'll be it. It'll be December thirtieth to January first. It will not be a December thirty first. And now from the but main it did not work out that way, thank God, otherwise the whole universe would have been thrown out of kilter. And now from the way main ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, it's New Year's Eve with Guy Lombardo and his orchestra. Sorry, it's the only one we know. <laughs> Sorry, it's the only one we know. <laughs> oh, good old guy. <laughs> See, <laughs> so anyway, uh, it, it, yeah, it, 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 I, there was a time, you know, we're making a reference here. That uh, very few people. Have, <laughs> Another one. Nobody under seventy will get. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Nobody <laughs> under seventy will get. So, if you were born before, if you were born after nineteen fifty nine, you won't get any of this stuff. Please, uh, move yeah. on. Yeah. You know, all these little references to Guy Lombardo, who we used to refer to as Gooey Lumbago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gooey, good old Gooey Lumbago. Gooey oh, Lumbago. Laughs laughs. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's the new year. What'd you do for New Year? You, I, you probably worked, right? No, I didn't. We stayed in. I haven't done a New Year's gig in the years. I used to, for like 24 years, I did, I did New Year's gig straight, every New Year's Eve. And then it's kind of stopped, and then I stopped looking, and we just stayed in. I think we went to bed by like uh, 9.59, and we woke up again at like uh, 11.58, waited two minutes, said, Happy New Year, honey, kissed each other, went back to bed. <laughs> really? That was it, huh? special. Why have you stopped working? That was it. it, was, it was why, have you, why, have you, why have you stopped working New Year's Eve? Any reason behind that? Uh, they stopped. They stopped. They stopped, <laughs> no, uh, they stopped axing me, so uh, I didn't have nothing. Yeah, yeah. So, so I s- didn't do nothing. So, what did you do for New Year's Eve? We hung in. What do we do? We get. Uh, we got some kind of treat. Oh yeah, we got a nice pizza from Mountain Mike's, and we just ate it and hung out and uh, I played with the cats, and uh, that was it. Just in the early early evening, and woke up. I usually wake up like four or five in the morning, which I like. And just kind of chill and watch the sun come up. And we did that New Year's Day when everyone else was going, Oh, my head. Bleh. Why did I drink that Jack Daniels? Bleh. So, uh, you know, it's just I'm old now. So I keep old man hours. Well, we had our annual New Year party here. We invited uh, 300 people. and uh, Oh, whoa, we, look we, out. All seven balconies were full. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had th- three other people besides the wife and myself. And, that's we nice. we nice had a very, together. very nice evening. You know, it was 
good. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, yeah. Hung out, sang Kim Buckley songs on the folk guitar, and, uh, you know. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. Everybody, everybody had a good time. That's good. So yeah, how- nice little get-together. We just, we just, if, it's, if, it, if the year ends with a zero, then it might be a big deal a little bit. But New Year's, is, if I don't have a gig, which is usually uh, <laughs> the way it is, New Year's just another night, you know. So just, okay, get it over with, and there you go, back to work. Do you think you've kind of slowed down a little bit in in comedy? In other words, uh, career-wise, hell yeah! Oh, I've come to a grinding halt <laughs> and fell off a cliff. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I heard uh, that. Not, I, not when I'm on stage. My my act has not slowed down. I'm still just as frenetic and sweaty as ever. Yeah, but, but now my uh, yeah, yeah, career-wise, yeah, I'm but, not. Yeah, you know. It but was but my it question is. about that is: is possibly part of it the fact that in a way you've kind of gotten out by moving out of San Francisco? That if you were still there, you might be running over and doing an open mic or whatever. You know, well, do you mean do you mean moving out of L.A. or do you mean moving out of uh, uh, San, out of, San Francisco? I mean, San Francisco. I'm, I'm very. I'm. Well, I, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I get it because it, it does take a while. It's still. It's only like forty minutes into the city, but I'm so fucking tired now. By the time I get to the city, by the time I cross over the bridge and then do another forty minutes of driving to the city and find a parking space, I'm, I'm already winded. You know. Yeah. And yeah, if I was in the city, you're right. I would probably. Uh, I don't know if I'd be going out every night like I did when I was younger when I when I had gumption and energy and vim and vigor, whatever vim is. Yeah. But uh yeah, if I was in the, if I was right in the middle of it it would probably be easier. I'd probably go out and doing it more, but now eh, I just wanna be home. Just, I don't want to pay the toll every time I want to do stand up either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you see, I mean it changes. It's just, well, I can do it, I know how to do it. I'd be nice to you know, it would have been nice to have a New Year's gig, but it's also nice to stay home, New Year's. You know, sit by the fire. Especially yeah, but did you go out and lobby for, for it? Did you go out and look for a New Year's gig? The question is, I'm asking, is your heart in it like it used to be? You mean looking for work or yeah, just doing yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, No. No, I love doing it. If I'm on a stage, I'll have a ton of fun. Whether there's one or 1,000 in the audience, I like to have fun. But, uh, no, my heart's not in it for looking for work and... I certainly don't want to travel like I used to. Oh my God, I've been everywhere on a plane, and uh, uh, I don't want to do that. If I never get on another plane for the rest of my life, I'll be satisfied. Been there, done that, lots of times. So I just like being in the Bay Area, and uh, I perform when I can or when I want. You know. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, yeah. I've done it. I've done it for over forty years, like pretty much every night. So now let me just. I'm on my I'm on my John Lennon's five year retirement phase, you know. I'm just uh, taking it easy now. So t- okay, we'll taking it easy now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Somebody even thinks I'm Warren Thomas. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, no, I just uh, you know I, I in a way I've kind of given up. You know. Uh, I mean I do. Never give I, up. Just give I, give in. Well, do, give in, but no, don't give up. <laughs> doing the internet is giving up. You know. I mean, I do a show every night, four nights a week, right? Yep. Doing it two hours. Uh, but yep. it's not the same. You know, it's not the same as, as getting up and going out and going to going to work and, you know, uh, walking into a big oh, sure, office yeah, building exactly. you know, here in New well, York. Well, everybody's doing everything from home now anyway. A lot, of, pe- a, a, a a lot of people are broadcasting. Yeah, a lot of people are broadcasting from home. I mean, if I did a show, yeah. I'd probably be offered. Do you want to do it from home? You know, uh, yeah. and I do have a studio here, right? But yeah, uh, I don't know. I want. I'd say no. I want to go down to the office. I want to go to this big yeah. office building, and I want to w- take an elevator up, and I want to walk into a studio where there's there somebody running the board right in front of me, and maybe have a producer to the right of me, and I'm doing the show and i miss that you know and i don't yeah, know that i, I want to do that, that at totally. home because at home i do it here uh i'm talking to you right now i'm in my pajamas yeah you want human human interaction you know so yeah. uh, an excuse to wear a suit if you wanted to you know so. and, and it's cold day today so it's uh you know am i gonna get out of these pajamas i think they <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't bet that i'm going to you know, I probably will because I yep. have to go out and forage for food at the local grocery store. Oh, you but, can't go to D'Agostino's wearing your uh, birthday suit. You well, know, you know, I'm right at my, I'm at that age, and I and I look old enough that if I showed up at the uh, supermarket in my bathrobe, they'd just figure that was par for the course. 
You know? Yeah, like some old mobster <laughs> pretending to be crazy. Hey, it's Vince Chin. Yeah, <laughs> right. Who, who was it? Who <laughs> was it? Who 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 was it? Yeah, he was. I think he was. Uh, he, he's the one who shot at Frank Costello in 1957. Yeah. And then later on, they made him a boss. And uh, I think his father, his brother, was a priest. Hey, they're the Louis Gigante. Yeah. The good Gigante and bad Gigante. So he, <laughs> he just used to walk around with a robe, and uh, he's a crazy. But he, but he did that because they were they were after him or on him or they were yeah, they're, trying. They're after him, and so, and yeah, so they, he wanted they, to prove they, he was crazy. They, they used to raid his house. They find him in like taking a shower, fully clothed, and everything. Hey, it's a Vince. He's pretending to be crazy again. Look at me. <laughs> hey, give me, give me the meatball. I watched him. I said, "This is so for the meatball." Well, hey, that, but they finally got him. They locked him up. So. But I figure, you know, I just turned, I just turned seventy-eight. Okay. Oh God, I hate saying that. Yep. Uh, what that, what, what that is, well, what's that shorthand for is close to death. Uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> Nine toes in the box of the tenth on a banana peel. Yeah, well. You know, and and I'm seeing all these other people I know dying, you know, and going. How come I'm still going? You know, and and I have yep, a great fear yep. of death, so I don't want to go. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's that I have such a fear of death, I'm not going to die. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be like George Burns may get to a death and go. Now, nah, wait for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Burns went at what 101. I think he made a hundred. Made a hundred. Uh, that, that was enough. Uh, it's just weird to see on the news. George were eighteen ninety six dash nineteen ninety six. Whoa, that boy! So he was born before flight. Oh. Irwin Corey made it to one hundred and three. Yeah. Oh my God! I got that like a guy who was full of rose cannon. Uh, <laughs> Lived in a lot of centuries. And there were a couple of others who died. I mean, Hope was almost a hundred, wasn't he? I think he. I think he might have made it to ninety nine or hundred. Definitely, yeah. yeah Nineteen oh yeah. three to two thousand. So, what is it about comedians that either? I've said this to you before that you either die young, or you die uh -huh. really old. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Like anybody named Shecky is probably still alive. Exactly. Including, including, <laughs> including my friend Shecky, but he's not a comedian. But yeah. you know you. <laughs> I went down to the Friars Club one night. They had this uh, group of com uh, old, you know, just comics, just doing kind of not a roast, but it was like, you know, it was a it was a gang bang, you know. They were just up there telling, trying to top each other, right? And it was a wonderful yeah. night because you saw oh, people like Freddie Roman and people like that who are like classics, classic. just classics. They know the classic guys without a doubt. They know the trade, right? But they're all Borscht Belt guys, and they probably work in Florida yeah. now. But these guys were in their 80s, and they were as funny as anybody I've ever seen. Sharp as a tack, because their minds are always working through their whole lives, so, you know, they don't let it rest. And so, these were the guys who probably, go, go, go these were the guys who probably had, when they asked, uh, you know, their advice on comedy by another comic, would always say, hey, kid, make sure you work clean. Yet these yeah, were the filthy. These were the filthiest fucking comics I've ever seen in my life. Oh sure, yeah. So the guy's sucking a man's anus and saying fuck this shit. <laughs> Thank you. Then you were, hey, wow, this guy was talking about mother-in-laws before. <laughs> what I hated was when the uh, Friars Club uh, somehow gave away the idea of the roast to television, and so they tried to do uh -huh. TV roasts. Uh, yeah. And and you can't do a roast unless it's filthy. That was yeah, the that was the, the that was the, the reason where people were drawn to these things in the first place. Sure. You know, you had to see the clean guys work filthy. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And uh, yep. Yeah. I heard Jack Benny say, "Cut! This is great." <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, he said. I heard Ed Sullivan say, "Twat!" Oh man, I want to see more of these. Yeah, but everybody was trying to see how they could out dirty each other, and then all of a sudden these things go to TV, and it doesn't even go to like Netflix where you can do that kind of material. It goes no. to like you know, uh -huh. Bravo or something like that where they go, oh, no, 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 yeah. we can't have the word pussy being used. You know, that would be yeah. a no, no. You know. <laughs> yep. So how? I'm sorry. Leave it to the suits to fuck it all up. How many women have you sexually harassed in your time? Ah, uh, let's see. Doing that, uh, doing that. Uh, I'd say zero. Yeah, me too. 
Me too. And yet, yeah. yet I bet you, if we were really famous now, there'd be somebody who would come forward they'd and say, be, "Oh, sure, they'd be crawling out of the woodwork. There'd be, uh, <laughs> there'd be, uh, there'd be people crawling out of the water who were born after I stopped getting laid all together." Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I, I, I actually, I don't have a girlfriend, most girlfriends that have anything bad to say about me, even ex ones. I'm, I'm friends with my ex wives. I'm friends with my ex girlfriends. You know, uh, I don't have any either because they're all dead. <laughs> they're all dead. I've said enough already. Did, did you ever have one die? No, no. Uh -oh. Well, I've had a couple die since. Since then, but not in the sack with me or anything uh, like that. Couple, so, about, I've never, I've never, about, oh, no, my, my tool is mighty, but it's never killed anyone. It's no, never but fif anyone. 15 years ago, a woman who I had had a relationship with at one point and was a good friend of mine, she died. And I went, uh, now women I fucked have died. You know, now it's, <laughs> now it's, yeah. really, now it's really starting. Yeah, you know? there, yeah, I can think of at least one that I uh, was with that is not uh, no longer among us yeah but she was married to a friend of mine later on and i don't know if he knew about me so i won't say the name yeah well uh, um um i bob rubin you know the story with bob rubin he was he he oh, sure. had cool. a woman die in bed with him while he was having sex with her oh of course true, drunk, true, to, true to true to the rube i said so what did you do and he said i kept going i'm not gonna you know I, okay. I don't. I don't. Go and finish the eight ball. Lick the mirror, try and call the cops. Left. But I said. <laughs> that, 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 that. I said that had to put you off of sex for quite a while. And he said, "Yeah, quite a while." <laughs> you know. He said, <laughs> yeah, when, the next night. "When that happens to you, <laughs> when that happens to you, you're, you know, you're, you're, yeah, yeah, it's not well, good." Was, yeah, okay. yeah. It's like having bad. It's like having bad mayonnaise. You're not gonna have anything with mayonnaise on for quite a while. It's like, whoa. You know, yeah. associate sex with death, and I thought only the doors did that. And there's songs, <laughs> yeah. but if you live it, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so I, you know, I, I, uh, um, uh, I've never had anybody die in bed with me. I've died in no, bed, but, <laughs> but that's another story <laughs> altogether. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> there I was, and I went limp. Okay, that's all. No, uh, but uh, yeah. But you know there are crazy women out there who would say, "Hey, you know, uh, I uh, was put oh, upon." Yeah, he yeah. had me with an Indian club one night, call for me, and blah blah blah. Yeah, but, exactly. Let's see, I, was a, I could swear I was in Rhode Island that yeah. night. Ooh. Yeah. So, uh, uh, does anything in politics bother you this, these days? Everything, but it's so insane. It's like I, I don't know if I'm watching a Saturday Night Live sketch or well, it can't because they're, it's too funny. But uh, it's just I'm just I'm like more flabbergasted than angry, you know. Yeah, this will probably <laughs> like, this will probably he, he said what? Uh, you know, it's just amazing. This will probably be like a, a play about a week from now. So a lot of people say, "Oh, that's an old story." Well, it is by now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, every uh, but, day, but every this, this, day. So this, it's like it's old news. This on. thing about him saying to Kim Jong Un in a tweet, well, my, <laughs> "I've got a bigger button." You know, mine's bigger and it works. Mine's you can touch mine and it's a bigger button. Yeah. Take a look. Take a look. You know there is no yeah. if no physical button. It's not like no. it's not like no. there's a red it's button on the table and it's like you know. Uh, yeah, do not press. Yeah, that that button. Do not press with a backwards that thing. Yeah, do not press this <laughs> button. Don't girls allowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't press. If you have, I, I don't. I'm hoping I'm right when it's, I don't think the world's going to end or anything, but I think we're in for a few years of absolute insanity. Now they're turning on each other, bad and saying, he's treasonous, blah, blah, blah. It's just insane, you know. So I'm just going to sit back and watch the fireworks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I it's it's disgusting. It's just disgusting. It's crazy. It's, and, crazy. it's and, too crazy. It's just, I can't even, it's just beyond disgusting. It's just like, it's just, you know, welcome to, welcome to the fun house. Welcome to the, the bizarro land. You see, I dreamed about welcome the, to, I, the I don't know about, about you, but when I was younger, I dreamed about the future. And the future, <laughs> the future I dreamed about is kind of here. I mean, you know, I mean, things like iPhones and uh, computers and the fact that I, if you, oh, yeah, if, you, if, you had Sky, if you had Skype, I could see you on video and that would be our video phone. I exactly. mean, it never came in the, 
in the in the form that we expected it would, because we expected there'd be a telephone you would pick up and look into a television camera and a, you know. But we, well, the way we do it is entirely different. But I can I can do a video phone with you, a video thing with you by the phone, and all those things are here. But somehow, I didn't account for the implementation of that technology, and the uh, implementation. Right. In the hands of the American public and of the world, sucks. I mean, they yeah. don't even know how to take a picture. They ter- do, do it vertically, so that when you're doing video, it's <laughs> like you're like looking through a through a, a fence post or something, you know? Yeah. Rather than yeah, say, hey, yeah, it, hey, hey, idiot, just oh, turn the camera <laughs> sideways. That's the way movies yeah. look. Okay, you want to you want to get as wide a panorama as possible, not a slit. Exactly. It's good for shooting vaginas, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah. you're shooting the tall anorexic. If you're shooting anorexic Watusi, it's okay. Other than that, exactly, yes. exactly. So I, you know, I mean, uh, and and you know, so all the technology. I mean, it's it, the technology is actually better than I imagined. But the implementation yep. of it is pure evil. I mean, what well, we've got an internet, and what do we do? We do a hundred and well, what is it? Is hundred and two hundred and forty characters now on tweets? Uh-huh. Boy, that's com- that's communication. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, just because technology gets better doesn't mean people get smarter. Unfortunately, they seem to get stupider. So they have all this amazing stuff. Oh, so how dumb I am to the whole world. <laughs> so. uh it's certainly people in large groups, which they tend to be on the internet because they're all connected. People in large groups are real stupid. So there you go. Well, the trouble is, they, uh, uh, you know, they did the uh, the what do you call it? The uh, uh, Twitter people uh, took the hundred and I think it was uh, forty characters, one hundred and thirty nine characters, uh-huh. whatever it was, and raised it to two hundred and forty. Now, consi- all right. considering <laughs> Make America great again. Now, considering Trump, they should have lowered it. Okay. <laughs> hey, yeah, Trump, no, you, no. You, give, give him enough rope, he'll hang himself. Trump, you only got two words. I got two I can <laughs> use with you, but you don't. Yeah. You know. I got lots of words. I got all kinds of big words, big, big words you've never heard before. But, I've made them up. But I just I just imagined a world in which, uh, what can I say? I don't know. I just imagined. That wasn't what I thought it would be. Yeah, and I and I never and I keep saying this. I never did get my uh, flying car or my household robot. <laughs> yeah, Jackson, you're and, all fired. And, and yeah, by the way, happened. by the oh, way, a Roomba, a Roomba doesn't count, folks. I'm talking about yeah. the household <laughs> robot. You know, the metal object that would walk into the room and say, "What may I do for you, sir?" Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Alexa, when Alexa does that, then we'll get one. The so. robot made. I mean, when you used to go to yep. the shows where they would show you things of the future, there was always a robot there. Oh, yeah. May I freshen that up for you, Mr. Holden? Yeah. Sure. In fact, you can go Lord. on uh, YouTube, and they actually have videos of various robots oh, the, sure. uh, from the 50s. In the world of the future, 1960, houses will float in the sky in 1960. 60, 60. <laughs> oh, I remember those. <laughs> In 1960, time travel will be commonplace while robots cut your coke for you. In 1960, 60, 60. the good old days. Oh man, yeah, my my, you know, my father used to work a show called uh, General Motors Futurama. Was it Futurama? Uh, no, it wasn't Futurama. It was Auto, Futurama. Uh, Autorama. It was Autorama. I'm, I forget the name of it now. But there was the automat. It. My father looked at the automat. Here's your burger, asshole. Here's a hand in there. But anyway, there was, it was General Motors uh, something Rama. I can't remember what it was called. Damn it. And and they used to have these uh, 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 the cars, uh, the current cars they came out with, and they would have the cars of the future. And yeah. <laughs> they all flew. <laughs> they, they all had fins. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. You got to have the fins. And uh, you sat in the middle of them. You sat right in the middle. That's where the steering wheel was. And yeah. <laughs> I want to go higher. Put it in W. And it was also at that show they would, they, they would do the things with the robots and so on to show you all the other wonderful yeah. things of the future. Uh, <laughs> Mo- the robot drive the car. Oh, what, oh, what was that called? Charles, Charles, two future. 
My father played it every year. It was called like Motorama or something like that. Something Rama. Uh, but I'll, something, I'll, I'll go look I'll it up and then I'll up. remember. I'll go, Google it. <laughs> yeah. Google it. Hey, listen, oh, uh, my friend. My goofy friend. We've, uh, we've, <laughs> we've kind of spent ourselves. Oh, isn't that pleasant? Oh, that was uh, that was quick. That was fun. That was a riff, that was a riffarama. So there you go. A, a riffarama, ladies and gentlemen, with the yep. lovely and the attractive Stephen Pearl. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. I'm a regular Helen Twelve Trees. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that was our friend Stephen Pearl. It takes care of our first half hour of the show. Now I only got 90 minutes left to do. <laughs> Easy way of doing it. Don't have many people watching tonight. Uh, not many people listening. I don't know why I keep doing this because it's uh, pathetic. But uh, let's see if we can get more people listening and watching. Uh, I'm going to go to the uh, I'm gonna go turn Skype on. Skype is what we use, by the way. Let me let me say something before I go to the Skype lines. Uh, last night we had a problem with the video, and one of the major problems we had with it was that I have there's a thing called CPU usage. It's the central processing unit in a computer. It's it's the brain and it's, and it's the brawn and it does all the heavy lifting. Okay, and I have a thing here that tells me how much CPU is being used. And all of a sudden, last night, it was like up to 70%, 80%. And then the picture going out started stuttering and everything here started stuttering. So I had to finally just kill the feed. And today, I, uh, I did some work on the, on the CPU load. And uh, I uh, r lowered the use of the CPU in a way, uh, which it supposedly gives us a more pixelated picture. But it doesn't. It looks like it's, it's going through really nice. And I lowered the quality of my camera, but it doesn't look like it. So um, uh, I think, oops, look what it, I sit on this. Uh, and it, uh, mm. Here we go. Yeah, I'm wearing pants tonight, folks. I came, this is formal night tonight, okay? Uh, anyway, so I am, um, um, so uh, the picture looks great and it looks terrific and we shouldn't have any problems with it uh, petering out on you. But now there's nobody watching it. I'm, I'm beginning to wonder why I do this whole thing anyway. I'm thinking I should just go to once a week, and then everybody will either appreciate me or just go away completely. Uh, but it's the fact that I'm here four nights a week, everybody goes, ah, well, I can, you know, like, all of a sudden, they're like, what, only like nine people watching it? Ah, oh, it's bullshit. I go, you know, I go to a lot of trouble to do the video part of the show. Uh uh, it, it is probably the biggest pain in the ass of anything that I do. I may just go back to plain audio. Forget it, you know? Uh, why, should I, why should I keep doing this like this every night? And working my ass off on it and uh, having to deal with CPU usage and all that kind of crap, all right? So anyway, I'm opening up the Skype lines uh, so that our people can call and uh, make your life uh, uh, a lot of fun with their discussion and so on. And will I be able to get till midnight? I don't know. I'm just, yeah. You know, I, I get a little, I got to tell you, I get depressed when I see low numbers. I really do. Now, a lot of times when I get low numbers here during the day, the playback of the shows uh, increases a great deal because people go, well, I can watch it later. I can watch it tomorrow. I can watch it, uh, you know, um, I don't have to stay up till, oh, midnight on the East Coast or 9 o'clock on the West Coast, and I, I got things to do with my life. And so uh, I think we may make this show just too available. Maybe I should just do it and never post it. And I don't know. I, I, it, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. So anyway, um, uh, so I'm sitting here now waiting for people to call. That's the other thing, you know. Will we get callers? Won't we get callers? Well, we'll always get Mike. And, uh, yes, hello, Mike. Hey, how you doing? Well, I'm mad at you. I, I want to apologize for being upset. I was being upset. Well, you, well you, know, you, were, you, you were wasting our fucking time here last night by taking up a space and not saying anything because you felt pissy because we said your camera was blurry, which it still is tonight. 
I don't know. I did everything that was possible, Alex. Yeah, but you didn't have so. to get pissy about it. Yeah, I apologize for. And what you're thinking, Alex, about what your dad was saying, auto deal, it was the autorama. No, it wasn't autorama. It was motorama. Well, well, close enough, isn't it? No. It, it, I was looking for the right name for it, and it turns out it was, I, I remembered it tonight as I was listening to that, that it was the General Motors Motorama. Oh, okay. And it was a traveling show. They would do it all over the country, and they would go and show you the world of the future and uh, the cars of the future and uh, all that other bullshit. So, anyway. So, anyway, we got a, I think it looks like we have a nice picture going out, just nobody's watching it. That's all. Yeah. You know. What should I do? Should I stop doing the TV thing? Uh, no. Maybe you should just do it one or two nights a week or one night a week and make it special. Yeah, that could be. That might be the way to do it. You know. Yeah. That's yeah. the way we used to do it. We used to just do it on Friday. Yes, Jeff? Yeah, to me, the TV really makes it uh, special. It does? Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you yeah, know, yeah. give it if you give people. We love to see you. There are eight people watching this right Let's now. See you. I know it's just eight people. But, now it, you know sometimes we get upwards around twenty, and after the night is over, but people turn it on and off and check in and check out, we get maybe three hundred people. But this is pathetic, folks. You know, this well, is just you still pathetic. haven't gotten uh, your naked uh, lady to. Yeah, well, enjoy. if I got a woman with big tits sitting here instead of me, I'm, I think it would probably go better. Well, you're yeah. just old school. Huh? You know? You're old school. I'm old school. You, yeah, well, I mean, I learned with Midnight Blue. You put some tits on the air and people will watch. You know? That's true. Yeah. Uh, At, or cats. Huh? Or cats playing uh, or, a piano. Or kitties. Kitties playing a piano. That would work, yeah. too. God, I'm having a or a, picture, or a picture of a goldfish bowl, you know, tank, uh, fish in a uh, fish tank swimming back and forth. That would be interesting, too. Or not? I can I can't figure it out. Let me see here. Have you, you know, you were saying about uh, Guy Lombardo. I can remember as a kid. Mm -hmm. My mom always told us we got to stay up to watch Guy Lombardo and the Royal Canadians. Yeah. Every New Year's Eve. I don't know why. It's just tradition of the mm -hmm. family. Yeah. Uh, the, he was the he was the tradition on New Year. In, the, yeah. in America, uh, much like Dick Clark then came with the Rockin' New Year's Eve or whatever, became the, the current brand name for New Year. Uh, mm -hmm. But Lombardo was from the Waldorf Astoria Hotel here in New York, and he played Old Lang Syne and uh, this really crappy music that he did. I mean, he was, he, it really wasn't great. It was really pretty terrible. When did he start that, you know, celebrate New Year's Eve? Back in the 30s? I have no idea. I have no idea. I never, I, I very, I, I very, under, the calendar is what, uh, 2007, 18 years old? Yeah. So that's when he started. He started, yeah, about 2018 <laughs> years ago. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if in every age there was a Guy Lombardo or a Dick Clark, <laughs> you know. I mean, maybe it was a town crier back in the 1800s. Hear ye, hear ye, it's midnight. You know, and he was very popular at doing that. And some old guy yelled, shut up, I'm trying to sleep. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it, 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 so I, it, you know, but, but I, you know, I get frustrated with this whole thing. Look at this, eight people. Fuck you, po folks. Why am I even doing this? You know, I should just... Oh. I, Say good night. You know. Huh? No, well, I mean, I, 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 I'm a radio guy. I should just be doing it as an audio podcast and leave it at that. You know, yeah. I don't know why I go to all this trouble. I bought cameras like crazy. I, you know, I put a lot of money into doing this, and then I got eight people to be watching it. And I know it's going out, and it's going out smoothly tonight. There's no reason why people shouldn't be looking at it, you know, so. And I and I spent I was up till two thirty in the morning last night and today getting this thing so I could lower the CPU level and get the whole thing working just perfectly. And, so and what was wrong with uh, the thing? Why it was, why it was, was just eating up too much power? It, if, I, it and I don't know whether it was something I did or that eventually it started tending that way. 
But, oh, the, but plus, you don't turn it off. Or? Well, I, I don't know, but all I know is that my picture was very clear last night, which means I had it really amped up. Um, so I don't know. I really don't know. To tell you the damn truth. Um, uh, but uh, you know, the more the more you use a machine, like for instance, encoding is very CPU intensive. It it, it I mean. It eats up maybe at least a third the encoding itself. The encoding is when we send a signal out to the uh, to whatever and uh, out to the uh, uh, internet and out to the Facebook. Uh, the encoder is what sends that signal, and that is a very um, CPU intensive uh, thing. So you've got to oh, then tweak yep. everything so that you get the best looking picture, but you're getting the lowest usage of your CPU. Right now I'm at 40, 42, 43%, which is good. Last night I saw it peaking at 70. You know. Your encoder is software based, not hardware based, right? Right. right. Uh, that maybe that's no, why. Well, no, there are very few. If you buy an encoder that is, uh, is uh, uh, hardware. hardware based, uh, all they do is encode video. They don't really send it out somewhere, and it's not that it you know it wouldn't be do any. I need a I need a machine with a high CPU to put a card in there that would do that. See, so uh, I you know this is all technical shit and stuff I shouldn't have to know. I'm the talent. I call the engineer to come in and fix something. You know, well, you're self-employed talent now. Get get used to uh, you know dumping your oh, own it, garbage. Self-employed is this is this called employment? Is this well, a form it, of employment? It, it, sometimes uh, the amount of employment that you have with Gabnet, mm -hmm. sometimes that's twice what I get paid. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, some there are good months and there are bad months, right, Phil? Yeah, yeah, you know. Well, it, 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 more bads than good. Well, you so. know, you're in a business, and, and, and Phil is, in case you don't know it, he runs a company and they install carpets. All right, plain and simple. Not a not a not a biggie, uh, but he's been doing this for all your life, practically. Your father did it, right? Yeah, yeah. But the the point is, what's so in interesting about the whole proposition? Uh, ah, here comes uh, here comes Rob Alfano. Uh, is that you've got a business which is should be a little bit technology proof, all right? Uh, should be, yeah, and it, and it is in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm trying. I was trying to think last night when we kind of s skirted around this discussion that you know, gee, um, what kind of technology could hurt Phil's business? And I'm thinking Amazon can't hurt it because somebody's got to install it. Okay. Yeah. So if they're going to get somebody to install it, uh, they want to see the carpet. They want to go into a store. You have a storefront, right? Where they can go in and see it. Out square feet. I mean, Rob, could you buy some carpet without seeing it first in a showroom somewhere? Um, yeah, if you had no, a designer. I don't think you could buy carpet without seeing it. Yeah, I mean, in other words. Carpet, uh, touching it. Yeah, I think you I, want to see I mean, it. I'm sure if I want to buy carpet, I can find it on Amazon. but right. And I can even find an installer, but I can't feel it. I can't touch it. I can't walk on it. You know, I can't get an idea of what it's going to look like. Wait till they get smell of vision Yeah. Even, when, we, yeah. Uh, even with the, when you build the house, you go to a design center yeah. and uh, you pick out hardwoods and tile and everything is tactile. I mean, you, they put in your hand. Yeah. 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 So I mean, but but the only thing that could could maybe put you out of business is is more consolidation of companies that will do it and be like the you know the Walmart of uh, of rugs. They they don't you know they do a good job because of the number of people that are walking through their stores like a Home Depot or Menards or yeah. uh, Lowe's. But um, the you know there's there's customers for for everybody. And some people want the high touch that they get from an owner operator that they're not going to get from a guy in a smock. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I always felt in sales that it was important uh, communications wise to go from the beginning to the end of the sale where the, you have end up with a satisfied customer. And in these other types of environments, 
uh, they get handed off to so many people, it becomes a frustrating uh, yeah. uh, purchase. Jeff had, his, yeah. Jeff had his hand up. Yeah, I have a question. Don't you uh, have some kind of a sample that you allow the people to take it home? A yes. piece, I don't know, about eight by eight or something? Uh, yeah, I have uh, now. The samples are getting smaller. They're they're using a large feeler, and then the color swatches are on the back and they're on these cards. Because I might have five hundred different styles. Yeah, and style wow. there be thirty to forty colors, and uh, so they're 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 making them smaller. But you know, it's it's a matter of perception. Uh, what I do in order to isolate it is I have a card. Mm -hmm. with a square cutout in the center, and I can lay it over those samples and then isolate them from the other ones, and it, and it really helps people. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, but uh, isn't, Mark. Uh, isn't the, the installers, isn't that very intensive work? Yeah, uh, it's, it's very difficult work, and it certainly took its toll on my body, and I only did it maybe I don't know, eight or nine years. I'm uh, surprised you haven't come out with a tool, you know, for the installers to work make make it easier there, for there is there is a it's, tool but you use, you use your knee it's, don't you use your no, knee to... it's called jose and hose b uh, oh i see <laughs> no, oh, no, no no but <laughs> no, no i mean seriously though they, they come out with a tool where it's easier on their knees where you don't yeah. have to bang it there you know, all the time the technology is changing and instead of stretching it in pretty soon there's going to be adhesives that uh, they'll be able to stick it down with and then pull it up without uh, uh, creating a mess on the floor. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're coming up with all sorts of different things, especially in carpet. But uh, one of the things that they need to do to actually protect that industry is that the warranties should not be uh, applicable unless you have a certified installer uh, putting in the carpet. So, you know, you have, a, you have a ton of people out there that work out of their truck, that don't have insurance, that don't have uh, uh, a license, that don't, um, uh, you won't be able to find them in, in six months. Uh, and so if the mills raise their level of uh, requirement for installation, I think that would make a difference. Yeah. It, it means all it seems like it would be a lot easier for the installers. Hmm. How is that? But it's, you know, when they bang it, you know, with their knees. Yeah. Oh, but with see, something. Uh, it, uh, 15, uh, 50 years ago, carpet was woven. It wasn't tufted. So you could move it and install it with those little knee kickers. But they, uh, you're not supposed to use those for the newer backings that have come out in the last 30 years. These backings need to be power stretched. You have a pole, and it goes uh, all the way across the room. Uh, oh. and, and you stretch it off of the other thing so the kicker is only used for positioning and shouldn't be used for stretching uh we call those guys that just use the kicker lumpers and bumpers how so long they, how, how long does the average human being's knees last i don't know if you people have ever seen this i have i think when i knew you you were doing it uh, yeah. it's, it's this metal thing and that in order to get the rug to get to the uh, seamlessly to the side of the room or whatever in wall to wall carpeting, you, they had a pad on their knee and then they would kick, they would hit this thing well, with their knee. You're not, you're not using the knee. You're actually using that muscle. Uh, I, I don't know if it's called the burris muscle or something. It's above the knee and it's, it's mm -hmm. a very, it's a very big muscle. But, uh, yeah, but my question is how many people's whatever that thing is, go out. They finally just... Oh, they, uh, if they're doing it that way and yeah. they're doing it their whole career, 15 years, they're going to be a cripple. And, wow. And, uh, you know, it's like football players, except they don't get paid like football players. Wow. That's terrible. Yeah. That's terrible. And, but I have a guy working for me that's been with me since 1992, and he's 75, and he does as good a job today as he did in 1992. And uh, the problem with guys, that, amazing. You know, the problem with that is if I saw a guy 75 years old coming into my house to install carpet, I would feel so sorry for him. Oh, you, you can't tell. This guy, this guy's amazing. Uh, 
Oh, no, I, I, but his point is, is that he'd feel sad for the guy that he's still yeah, installing like, oh carpet God. at seven. This guy's got a sixty-five foot Chris Craft. Listen, considering <laughs> the way my career's been going, I'm going to have to start laying carpet. At- <laughs> yeah, Primo's got a sixty-five foot Chris Craft constellation. You don't have to feel, you know, you know, his wife's driving around in a new two-seater uh, Mercedes. You don't have to feel. Please. No, no, no! I don't mean for for uh, the amount of that he needs the money. The <laughs> guy is going to be busting his ass and stalling car. I would feel bad that it's, it's hard work. Oh, it, it is, but it, 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 it is as hard as you think it is. Uh, you know, I've seen guys that move pianos by themselves, big yeah. grand pianos. I know, and, I've seen and uh, it's all about balance. Uh, and so you get these 12 foot rolls of carpet. You can't expect uh, Mrs. Consumer to move uh, 300 pounds of carpet. But they're, 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 you know, even though they're yeah, lifting I, it, I, they're I, not I, lifting. I got a big TV set in back of me here. I don't know if yeah. you can see it. Uh, and it, that's an old Samsung. And, you know, they got lighter and lighter. Every year they got lighter. Okay. Yeah. But that one is a beast. And uh, somebody's can't. coming over to get it on Saturday, and he and I are going to have to pick that thing up and take it down the hall. I think probably once we both do it and there's one on either end, it'll be easier than I think. But still, I'm getting to the age where I really would like to hire somebody to be on that other side yeah. of the thing. You hey, know? I had this Sony Trinitron. Uh, the thing was maybe, I don't know, oh, 35 oh. inches or something. Oh, it, you got one of the big ones. Yeah, it took uh, four my guys friend to Shecky lift it. had a 36-inch Sony. Maybe. That when he got his flat screen, finally he had to move it out of the room, and I think he did it himself. And I'm going, I how did you pick? He he unless I, he unless he slid it on a piece of carpet uh, on, on on its tube. Yeah. I mean, and, this thing we probably can carry. I mean, we car- I carried it in here for Christ's sake, you know, yeah. uh, you know. But uh, I I just. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm I'm sitting here f- trying to figure out how we're going to get the TV set from here to the end of the apartment. I, you know, I, it, the, after it gets there, it's her problem and his problem to get it out of the house. You know, oh, well, then uh, you need a dolly, and you set it down exactly. on the dolly, and you roll. Where, where, where do you, you get it? it? Where do you get a dolly? Uh, well, there. <laughs> You can go to Harbor Freight and buy one for eight dollars, or you can rent one uh, at uh, for fifteen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And make sure you use blankets to cover it when you're moving it. Why? I'm just yeah. moving it down the hall. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to take it and set it down on this uh, uh, rectangular dolly. It has like four wheels underneath it. Yeah. And uh, and then you roll it. To... I think it's tough on a dolly because of the width. Would you get it through doorways? Oh, you do it the the long way. Yeah, do it the long way. The are only like 20 inches wide and uh, maybe uh, 30 inches long. Maybe I could ask my uh, my, uh, my super if we have a dolly in the house that I, the apartment that I could use. The super $20 and ask him to move the TV. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, it's on Saturday and I don't know if he works on Saturday, so, you know. What, is he religious? Uh, I, you got a Jewish super? No. He's no. orthodox <laughs> on Saturday. We've been joined by Patrick. Hello, on Patrick. Sunday, you know what I'm amazed by? Can I be honest about this? Uh, uh, is how, Except for, and even tonight he's better, how, how clear all the pictures have been lately. I mean, I remember, Patrick, when I get a, a video from you, know, I get your, your signal, and it would be blurry and everything else. And it's really it just, just, you know, I no, can see Rob's everything. Cramp- Hmm? Bob's camera is making him look about 25 pounds lighter. <laughs> Bob's? <laughs> Rob's? Yeah, yeah. He's using a thinner camera. Yeah. <laughs> I, w- I was going to say something, by the way, about last night. We were talking about the, the weight loss that he has, uh, he has uh, a- a- achieved so far of about 25 pounds. And, uh, I, uh, you know, we had a thing a couple of weeks ago where... You know, Phil was questioning whatever. I don't want to bring it up again. I'm not going there. But don't, don't, no, don't go there. But uh, uh, the other night I got m- uh, mad because I was wa- reading or watching. What was it I was doing? It was either reading or watching. an ar- uh, uh, I think it was an article. Yeah, it was an article about uh, uh, the paleo diet, which 
basically is the low carb diet. You know, when they talk about the paleo diet, it's just simply a fancier version of the the Atkins diet. Uh, uh, I don't know. You, I guess you wear bear skin while you're eating or something. I don't know. I can't figure it out. But uh, but the article said paleo diets are bad for you and they're dangerous. The best ones the Mediterranean because you get fruits and things like that. And I'm going, you know, fuck you. I felt the same way you did, uh, 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 Rob. Fuck you. It, it, what, what, what was worse for me, this diet or the 60 pounds that I had on me that I don't have now? You know, first cholesterol is not good for you. What? Then cholesterol is not a problem. Don't yeah. eat eggs. Eat eggs. Yeah. It's a... Uh, uh, what you yeah, do is you find a diet, you find a diet that works for you, and 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 you go with it. I mean, what I do now is I've added a little fruit into my diet and things like that because I like fruit, you know. But it, when I see it's putting a little weight on me, then I back off a little bit. You know, I keep an eye, I keep an eye on the scale. But it just pissed me off, and I began to say, now I know how Rob was feeling that day. You know, like I said, it wasn't a matter of being pissed. It was just a matter of you know what. I, I don't want to hear negativity about what I'm doing. It's too late for that. I'm in it. I'm doing it. And so I didn't want to hear it, then have to think about it. And mull, I just, no, nope, I can't handle that. It's, I wasn't pissed. I don't care. But, you know, everybody is entitled to their opinion. And, you know, I just, right. I didn't need to hear it because I'm doing it. Right. Right. Well, well, I got a question for you on your diet. On yeah. the fruit, what kind of fruit do you eat? You know, does uh, it matter? Yes, it matters. You could have apples and oranges and certain berries. That's it. And and uh, it's like a medium sized fruit. Two, two of those a day. Like a small peach or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, no uh, peach. Medium. No. So Your apples, oranges, and berries. Isn't it amazing though, uh, 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 Rob, that when you go when you think of going on a diet, it's like this huge wall you've got to hurdle, right? And once you get on a diet, once you get a couple of weeks into it, it becomes easy. Yes, it's because it's because, you know what they say, plan the work, then work the plan. Yeah. So once you once you're in it and you're doing it and you've got a routine and you've got everything that you need, you wake up each day and you do it. And it's simple. The problem is when you get there now, the gates are wide open and now you've got to make choices that are different and there's no payoff. Meaning when I get up in the morning, you know, you go to the scale and you go, yes, you go, you know, it's that. that yeah, yeah. That you don't No, I don't I don't get a payoff. You know, the payoff I get some days I'm one hundred and eighty eight and some days I'm one hundred and ninety and some days I'm one hundred and eighty six. But it goes back and forth in that area because so I'm not trying to lose the weight any longer. But what you got to watch out for is how many people, you know, lose uh, 60 pounds and then all of a sudden you see them a year later and they put it all back on. So I, I think I mentioned to you that my yeah. brother was a is was a really big guy. Yeah. And he didn't do anything special except cut back and do a lot of walking to the tune of about 11 miles a day. Mm -hmm. And he so got cool. down really, really to the point where you'd say, OK, that's enough. You're starting to look a little bit emaciated. Well, nothing according to him. Nothing has changed in what he's eating. He's still doing all the walking, but he's gaining weight. Uh huh. Because your body, he doesn't get winded. He could walk 12, 11, 12 miles, not even break a sweat, nothing, no winded. What do you do? 15 miles, 16 miles? How do you, how do you, uh, gotta have bunch stuff. it's an amazing thing, right? It, it, it's it got some cardio and uh, some other kinds of exercises. You've got to change it up. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm very happy because I suddenly realized I started this uh, diet maybe two Thanksgivings ago or maybe longer than that. I can't remember, but I've managed to keep it off. You know, it's, I've never gotten to the point where I suddenly saw I had a huge spike. I go up one pound and I go crazy, you know. That's good. Do you weigh yourself every day? Uh, about every other day. Um, I didn't, when I started the diet, here's my secret to people. Uh, you should do it too. When if you're, if anybody out there is trying to lose weight, go on your diet. Don't get on your scale. Don't get on your scale for four, five, six months. Just keep on the diet. Then get on the scale and you'll say, 
okay, now I'm on my way. Now this is worth it. I see that it's worth it. But if you start a diet and a week later you get on the scale and you've lost five pounds, that's not enough incentive for you. You know, so just so that I could go without the payoff of getting <clears throat> scale that long. I need to get on the scale that what that's what motivates me. But we also didn't have a good scale. So it didn't matter whether I had a scale or not. Uh, I mean, every day it's 0. 0.6, 0. 0.4, one pound, 1.2. You, you know when I found out I had lost weight? I went to my doctor and they weighed me for my yearly visit. And I was at 122, uh, two, uh, excuse me, 222 pounds. And I had been 244 the last year. So I knew it was working. So that's when I, we went out and bought a really good scale and I started getting on it every day. You know, uh, I'm trying the blood letters diet. What's that? Uh, well, I got diabetes. So, uh, and it's, uh, it was starting to get a little out of control. Yeah. So, um, I decided that before I could eat anything, mm -hmm. I would take, uh, my blood reading. Yeah. Prick my finger and take the reading. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, it must've been a big prick because you are one. So yeah, well, <laughs> I, I do it so often that it's, uh, I'm practiced, Yeah. but, uh, then I, uh, I eat, and two hours later, I check it again. And uh, I'm seeing what foods are making me spike and which ones aren't. Oh, and part of it is to keep my uh, A1C down so that when I go in for the cancer operation, I'll heal better. If your sugars are high, you yeah. don't heal as well. So uh, that was another reason I decided to put off the operation because my sugar was a little on the high, a very, it was on the high side. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, it didn't seem like I could do anything to get it down. Mm -hmm. Bill, but, do you do you eat a lot of carbs like rice and you not more? <laughs> no, no, I don't know, but like your meats and stuff like that. I know you eat a lot of steak. All I'm saying is, if Phil, if, 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 as much as I used to, if Phil uh, really I mean, religiously eggs. went on a low carb diet and stuck to it. I think he would find that diabetes would almost disappear. Oh, yeah, it will. And, yeah. you know, uh, I don't know, 2003, uh, I lost a significant amount of weight on Atkins. And I kept it off for five years. And uh, then it, it came on like a, like a, a well, freight train. Well, because you, you know, you, yeah. you forget. It you forget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I'll tell you, it's, I find it especially hard to keep the weight off during the winter. I find that I, I've, I've gone on, uh, reinforced my low carb diet and still gained weight a, a couple of days a week. And then because of the weather, you know, yeah. I think the cold weather doesn't help. Uh, I think you probably lose more weight during the summer. Look at these numbers of people be, they were, yeah. some of them were there and now they're gone again. What the fuck? And the well, signal, they want to hear about and, Trump. And the signal is perfect. Well, let's talk about Trump then. Why hey, don't we? I got we? one for you. Why I got don't one for you. Uh -oh. so, Trump says today, uh, why are these people coming from uh, these <laughs> shithole countries? <laughs> shithole countries. Yes, he used shit the word shithole. Right. He says, why can't we get some of them from Norway? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be proud, right, Bill? Huh? You got to be proud. Yeah, you got to be yeah. proud. You got to be well, proud of the guy you voted for, Phil. Well, <laughs> he doesn't have a filter, that's for you sure. You know, you know what I loved more than him saying shithole was all yeah. the networks trying not to say shithole. Oh, <laughs> seeing it had it plastered on the screen, shithole. Oh, right really? There Big the MSNBC. Yeah. It was s dash 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 hole. Yeah, and then, well, and then wait a minute. And then it's like, uh, uh, what's his name? The guy who does Meet the Press uh, is calling it. In, in, their way of doing it is he called the, the, called the countries an S-hole. And I'm thinking, yeah. that's very close to asshole. I mean, why don't you just say yeah. shithole? Kind of like the N-word. You know? And then finally, I went over to NBC News tonight, and they said, attention, get the kids away from the television set. Have them go take a shower because the next the next uh, segment has a has a questionable word in it, and the actual reporter said shithole. And yeah. I think there was a catharsis <laughs> that that newsman was news feeling. Wait, 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 that man was feeling because for the first time on his news reporting, he got to say shithole. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I kept saying to, to girlfriend, I said, I don't know why MSNBC isn't saying it. The president said it. You're reporting it. Okay? If he said fuck face, you should report it. You know? That's why CNN changed because they started out with the S dot 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 whole, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. But they eventually, like within five minutes, they changed it and it was stuck on the screen, shithole. And the, the, the anchors didn't say it, but the reporters said it. So the reporters, like the guy, what's his name, who is at the White House, their White House reporter, I can't think of uh, him. He uh, used yeah. the full word. Major uh, Garrett. Uh, yeah. and, but, but like uh, Wolf Blitzer would say, asshole. Yeah, but I mean, I guess it was all up to the individual reporter. They probably just said, yeah. say what, say whatever you feel comfortable saying. Right. The right. president said shithole. All right, and That's it, awesome. it, it, he he referred to Africa and Haiti as <laughs> shithole nations. African well, countries. The truth. You know, what I mean, you know, think about it. <laughs> oh, really? Know? Oh, really? There's some very nice places in Africa, Phil. Oh, I'm sure. It's just that, yeah. you know, look at Haiti. Uh, it is a shithole. And uh, they, you know, they need a lot of help. People are starving there. Yeah, they but got they're following it up with, why can't we get more people from Norway? <laughs> you know, we'd be up <laughs> to our ass in Ludafisk, okay? Uh, so he interviewed or talked to the uh, president of Norway. I think it's a woman. Uh, was it the same day or the day yeah, before? The day before, yeah. So that's why I had Norway on his mind. Yeah. He could remember her name. Hi, Tony. Oh, hi. Yeah, it's like he, he called and he didn't expect I'd be here. Hi, Tony. Hey, How are you? Yeah, how you doing? I got a little cold. cold this place is shithole. Yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> but, I, I mean, you know, I mean, this is just a, one more gaffe. You know, why is it? <clears throat> Every single day he is the topic of conversation nationally. I don't know. <sighs> There could be do they could be doing something in some foreign country that we should know about, but we're never going to find out about it because he monopolizes the the news conversation. Patrick, the, the thing that I I have to say I did enjoy that comment. Mm-hmm. One few times that I him or you know heard about something like that and have laughed. And have actually enjoyed the fact that he said it, because it's something that my grandfather would say, or an uncle, and that to me, it it brought back kind of fond memories of that, because, you know, I mean, well, that's fine. That was your grandfather. That was your father, or oh. whatever. But he wasn't the president of the United States speaking to the world about nations being shitholes. Alan. It's time they told the truth. <laughs> Can I say something? Wait a minute. Wait, hold on. Let, let, Pat, let Patrick finish. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it reminded me very much of there was just one time I went out to dinner with my grandfather. It was just him and I, and I had just gotten back from recovering from surgery, and he wanted to take me out to dinner. So two of us went out. And there were some um, Latino servers. And he made the comment to me, but in a very audible um, voice, um, maybe those spit could bring some coffee over here. <laughs> 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 he have Tourette's? Oh, I... I, I, no, he had, a, he had a desire to be killed, actually, is what it was. <laughs> he likes fitness oh food. God. Lower your voice, Grandpa. You know, and that, and that was the last time I went out to eat with him, because I explained to my mom that I can't do this because he's going to say nigger or he's going to say <laughs> something else, and I just I can't deal with it. And you can't run. (laughs) In in all seriousness, here's a guy who he's thinking that we're at home. I'm sure, you know, just he and I or whatever, he's forgetting where he's at. And I've got no way to explain what's going on to somebody. Are you kind of uh, intimating that Donald Trump is forgetting where he is? No. I'm saying that he has no filter. 
Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe working for him. Uh, you know, well, I, mean, I don't. Things... Here, here's what happened. It happened in some kind of meeting they were having, right. and somehow the word got out. I don't know who's leaking this it stuff. Recorded it. Huh? It, it recorded. Was, it, was, it, was it recorded? Yeah. It, yeah. I, I heard, heard him say it. Oh really? Oh, he I never heard. That. I never heard the tape. I think it was Haiti. I, I heard. I, I heard it. Uh, really? Oh. There were there were Democrats and I Republicans didn't... there. Yeah. Uh, and Talk in front about of that. them. While he did it. Hey, Alex. What? I, I was going to tell you, like, when, when uh, my uncle who passed away a long time ago, my cousin Chris had a birthday party, and his friend was all right. He was Chinese, so my Uncle Tommy was a funny guy. He said, hey, chopsticks, come on, cut the cake. He didn't care, <laughs> but Tommy was joking. <laughs> but I said, Tommy, chopsticks, really? <laughs> you know, he would just say whatever was on his mind. He was funny, though. <laughs> Well, Tony says, what are you, fucking stupid? Come on. <laughs> hey, uh, now that we talk Trump instead of diets, did, did you get a few more listeners? No. Trump's crazy. No. He stayed right <laughs> there, rock solid at nine. <gasps> yeah. That's not bad. Wouldn't well, yeah, not bad? That's, that, we have more people practically on the citizens panel. That's <laughs> true. Let's talk about sex. Oh, we just went up to ten, ladies and gentlemen. Oh boy, we're, you... we're we're now we're kicking ass. Well, Patrick said we're going to talk about sex. So yeah, we got an extra one there. So yeah, well, I mean, we said. Does anybody know what countries he called shitholes? Was it Haiti, oh, and Africa? Haiti, no. Haiti, no, and the Haiti and, 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 and Africa? And he thinks Africa. he thinks Africa is one those? country. Okay, <laughs> uh, he he doesn't it's realize it's a continent. Mean. You know, and of course he's incontinent, so he should know all about those things. But it, it was it. You know, it, this guy is getting. And then today, the other big gaffe. I mean, it's yeah. it. Some days there's one gaffe. Some days there are two gaffes. Some days there are about ten of them. Okay, but the second gaffe uh, today was the. Um, oh boy, this one was really good. It was about uh, the uh, um, uh, FISA. Yeah, uh, and yeah. and the fact that uh, they were voting in Congress uh, to uh, tighten up on the uh, the FISA rules on who you could, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, but this wire was on tap. the seven hundred. Wait a minute, let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah. Uh, uh, who you could, uh, you know, wiretap and so on, and expanding the powers of doing that, but not here in this country. This was no, for fraud. foreign and abroad. Well, somehow Trump didn't get that message, and he's watching Fox this morning. And that lawyer guy or that judge, what's his name, uh, Napolitano oh. or whatever, oh, I hate him. is on, and he's no, he's talking about the fact something. that they, you know, that uh, they want to they want to expand they, they want to expand the laws here in America, and uh, uh, they uh, they should let them uh, they shouldn't let them because you know it's bad when we have too many of these laws. And Trump sees that and thinks that that that's well, what they're voting on, and he does a tweet about it. Ryan uh, got the key, uh, the, uh, he, he got on the uh, floor and he specifically said, "Hey, because a lot of people spoke and was saying uh, that the same thing Trump did." And uh, so he got on the floor and spoke, and he says, "This is just for 702. 702 is for foreign people and 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 so forth." Now. Uh, what Trump said was the unmasking of the uh, U.S. citizens that are caught up in these FISA uh, uh, things is what he wants to uh, make sure that American citizens are safe from no, but, being but, but, unmasked. But, no, but he thought he was addressing himself to the order of the day, and he wasn't. Well, they all were. Even the congressmen uh, uh, were saying that uh, that that, uh, that was the thing. Uh, so they were all caught up in that. You know that that's fine. You know, okay. He he got confused. I'm sure other presidents have been confused. The problem is, he goes right to Twitter instead of getting clarification <laughs> and talk. His impetuous nature. Because that guy Napolitano said, Mr. President, I don't understand how you can be for this because – and then he mentioned how he said Obama had bugged him 
in Trump Tower before the election. And so that got him right away on Twitter, on Twitter to come well, out and speak without getting clarification. He's the fucking Well, also, president. he's been told before that they see the tweet, you know. Uh, he loves the tweet. Yeah. And then, of course, they can't admit that he fucked up. So Sarah Huckabee. Dickinson, whatever. Did you see the fight with the phone call <laughs> from his hand? Confusion? There's no, 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 not at all. We're, no one was confused about it. They just covered up and lie instead of admitting to it. Yes, uh, Patrick. One thing that I, I kind of wish would have happened. Um, uh, of course, now his name slipping my mind. Uh, the, uh, his chief of staff, uh, General um, uh, 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 Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, Kelly. I I wish that he that when he was brought on, that he would have taken control of the phone, so that the Twitter bullshit would be a little bit like like Rob said, okay, maybe it was confusing and you know and, and Phil says everybody seemed to be getting mixed up between international and international I fine. But that's where the chief of staff comes in and makes sure that before he fires off a Twitter you know, a tweet, uh, we're gonna make sure that it's accurate. Or is it accurate as the news is at that point. It is accurate, and I tell you why it's accurate because it's what's on his mind at the moment. Whether it's true or not is is, a, is another thing. But it's what he's doing is he's giving us his unfiltered opinion at the time, and it's not being filtered through the well, news. Well, we don't want his unfiltered opinion. <laughs> you don't want it, but uh, I don't mind it. You know, the other thing is that what he did today, the shithole statement. Uh, I think it's going to secure his base to the point where they're going to want him to come back not only in 2020, but in 2024. Uh, because so uh, And they're racists, the uh, base. Yeah, they, yeah, I'm sure they are. But uh, the uh, and, and I'm not doubting that maybe Trump is a racist, too. Uh, oh although God. he's, uh, he's pro-Israel. Pro you know what he is? Uh, but that has nothing to do with racism. Uh, but the... the uh, of course he's a racist. I mean, uh, I'm a racist. I mean, I'm white. And I think Everybody I, while I don't have ill thoughts about black people, and certainly I can't dislike them, I live with them here, you know, uh, because I'm white, uh, my frame of reference is white. And so therefore, my empathy, no matter how much I want to give towards another black person, is limited because it's limited by my life experience. And so... I can see where Trump in his rather cloistered life that he had when he was growing up and probably did not have a lot of exposure to nor you know regular black people he probably rich blacks yes but not just the street blacks he had no kind of life with them didn't know them I can see where he has racist concepts just because he was never exposed to it does that make sense yeah uh uh yeah you know so but, uh, but you know like I said, I think it's going to energize his uh, his base, which is all I, he has. I, I, look, I, his base is are idiots. Okay, plain and well, simple. I don't and, know and, about and, that. And, 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 and Phil, you're one of them, unfortunately. Yeah, no, no, no. I, you know, I don't know that his base are, are idiots. I think that a lot of them uh, may be, but there's uh, many of them that like what he's doing because he's actually doing what he said he was going to do, which. Most presidents uh, get into office and don't do a damn thing that they said. Well, they were when do. he said what he was going to do earlier when he was running for president, I kept saying, and everybody kept saying, if he does that, it'll fuck up the country. And he's lived up to his promise. He's fucking up the country. Yeah, I know. There's 25 percent uh, boost in the uh, in, in the economy. Uh, we're at four uh, percent uh, growth GMP. Uh, you know, there, there's all sorts. He of has things very little to do. He has very little to do with any of that. Well, you know, um, most of the time you elect a Republican after a Democrat, the the uh, economy goes into the shitter. And the reason it does uh, is, um, well, this this has been the way it's been traditionally uh, almost every time. This is the first time in years, uh, and I don't remember how many presidents, you know, even Hoover it went in the shitter, uh, that uh, things have actually improved. Come on, give it a little time. He's not even in office. I know it feels like four, 
but he's not even in office for uh, and, for, and, for and, and you've, he, got, you've got, also got to remember that this economy was on a rebound before he ever became president, and and, and that was going to keep on going whether no matter who became president. And suddenly they believed the numbers. They didn't want to believe it was 20, how many, what, 25% no, on a he had very mediocre, very mediocre rebound and for a long time. Uh, I, I, it I wasn't mediocre. It. it wasn't mediocre under Obama. He turned it around. Mm. It started well, getting, re well, unemployment started started catapulting downward. Or catapulting. Yeah, how do you catapult you, downwards? Did it was falling downward. Regulations. No, but the, 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 all those things, the regulations <laughs> he's tried to do away with haven't gone really into effect yet. Okay, so you can't say that the, the attitude of them. Oh, that's not the Jeff attitude. Wants to say yeah, something. yeah. Let me just say one thing before I, we go further. Go ahead. Uh, and, and that is that yeah, we have these companies uh, giving uh, away thousand dollar bonuses, and in fact, you know, who gave a thousand dollar bonus today. Uh, hmm. um, a wall Walmart. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then they closed about 25 Sam's Clubs. So what, what can you say? From 9 to 11. Huh? The president goes on and praises Walmart, and not an hour later, they closed 25 Sam's Clubs. Yeah, look, but they raised the wage, their starting wage from 9 to $11. Oh, today. yeah, 11 bucks, man. Oh, God, that's great. Hey, that's a pretty big... Uh, increase when you got yeah. home, uh, how many hundreds of thousands of employees? Yeah, when you're working the normal we work week at Walmart of 80 hours. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, you never get all. <laughs> No, that, that might be a to begin with, me. the minimum wage should be fifteen dollars, and I think everybody agrees on that one, except you, uh, of course, it, because it, you it, like it, to hire it, you like to hire immigrants <laughs> who hang around. Uh, uh, wage uh, should be for adults. It should be for people under the age of eighteen. What? Oh come on! The minimum wage should Why? not. Why? That's be racist. Adults. That's ages. What do you mean, though, Phil? Are you saying that you could earn a minimum wage if, uh, under the age of fifteen, and then when you become an adult, you could earn nothing? What no. Mean uh, the minimum wage for as a, a, a juvenile uh, should be set at a reasonable rate uh, to bring them into the working society, but adults uh, should get a lot more than that and shouldn't be concerned with the minimum. Uh, because in a good economy, uh, the wages will increase because of the demand. But if you can pay somebody uh, the minimum and, and they'll accept it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there's no competition for that wage. Yeah. You think $15 an hour is something that will make you comfortable? No, I don't well, think it's so enough. Well, there you go. Right. So but it's I not don't, you have to have a minimum to, uh, to uh, regulate what the minimum should be. Uh, the, the, the wages, uh, will increase because of competition. Uh, oh, they haven't in 30 years. No, but people are taking jobs that should have been for juveniles and, uh, and, and the they're, they're trying the to live on them. What are you talking about? What jobs are you talking about? You yeah, used to be able, or, oh, well, but you used to be able to run a business. You used to be able to start a restaurant and now you got Ruby Tuesdays and you got Applebee's and you got all these companies that come in and make it very difficult for for you to earn a living. Well, so, you, those so people we, used to work for tips. If you open up Home Depot, I'm about, I know waiters and waitresses is different. <clears throat> but open up a Home Depot and now you've closed every little local grocer, uh, not grocer, but every little local hardware store who used to make a nice living. Right. And now he's what? How much do you want to pay him? Should he get fifty, sixty thousand, eighty thousand a year to be and a? Well, no. But you see, if the Home Depot, uh, uh, if if people, uh, there's a book called The Big Box Swindle, uh, which I recommend people read if they want to know about the effects of big boxes and what you're talking about with the with the local merchants, the Main Street merchants. Right. Uh, big Box Swindle, excellent book. Uh, so anyway, what what yeah, happens is agents. people are greedy. People are greedy. They want that hammer for six dollars rather than to pay nine dollars for the hammer, so that uh, their neighbors can can earn a decent living. What what happened is if Home Depot opened the store and and all the people said, "Hey, I'm not going to buy from Home Depot unless they uh, are going to uh, you know give similar benefits." To the uh, to my neighbors, then they'd be sitting there with an empty box and a bunch of hammers. But people are greedy; they want something for nothing, and uh, and you'll see the effects of that. Big box swindle. It's uh, 
it's it's yeah, and, and what what TV, on, what 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 half ass do- what half ass have- documentary did you get that term from? Uh, it was a book <laughs> that a friend of mine was involved with uh, uh, because I'm part of a co-op. Uh, uh, my my carpet store yeah, I know, is, I know. is part of a national co-op and a very very successful one, and uh, so they're using the co-op system to help Main Street uh, uh, merchants. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm I'm 100 percent behind you with what you talk about with box stores. I fucking hate them, but you're blaming the wrong people. You got to blame the government. You got to blame lawmakers because they're the ones who made it possible for these big businesses to flourish. They're the ones who, because they have all this money, they put all this money into government to have all these lobbyists go in there and make it very possible for these kinds of environments to to take place. You're never going to compete. You're having trouble competing. It's only because of your specialty, like we talked about earlier, that you hang on. Otherwise, you'd be working for... You'd be a working stiff for thirteen dollars an hour at a at a at a Home Depot or a Lowe's. That'd be a raise. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, you buy five thousand dollar cameras, you you're you're doing pretty well. Well, you yeah, know, I'll tell you. Let's talk about the big box stores for a second. Uh, the, what what constitutes a big box store? Now, like for instance, I mentioned last night between uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas. 82%, that's the exact figure, I said 80 last night, but the 82% of all Christmas sales were through Amazon in this country. Uh, is that a big box store? Yes, and they're becoming more and more so. Uh, weren't they talking about buying Target so that they could have distribution centers? Uh, and, uh, you know, the Target stores are... are, are are basically nowhere now and so if they had all of these target stores people could actually pick it up because what's happening is that the delivery of this stuff has been a uh, to people's homes has been a real difficult thing you know uh, bringing the stuff inside having special locks no, but having if cameras. amazon does that they just what's the difference between them and shopping at best buy who will come out and deliver the stuff for you if you just buy it online or you can go down to the store and pick it up well, right I mean, now yeah. they're being subsidized. They're being you know what I can see him doing? I can see him buying a FedEx. No, they're not being subsidized by the government, Phil. You listen to Donald Trump's uh, version of it. Wait a minute. Let me finish. Let me finish. The post office, like UPS, like any one of a number of, of FedEx and all of them, bid for Amazon's business because it is so pervasive and so large and so huge, you want that business. So they right. give them a de- they give them a deal because they're trying to underbid UPS. They're trying to underbid FedEx. It is not that they're giving the store away. They're bidding and trying to get the business. There's a kernel of truth to everything that Trump says, and Trump said that uh, the government is subsidizing. No, they're Amazon. not. They're not. Am- Amazon is keeping the post office alive. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Um, with. You know, you brought up. Trump's uh, jealous of him. Will, will you let Patrick talk, please? Oh, yeah. Sir. You brought up uh, Walmart and uh, closing the Sam Clubs. And one of the things that, that they closed the Sam Club that's right near me this morning. Yeah. Um, people showed up and there was no, no work for them to have. Um, what I had heard they're going to do with some of these things, and likely the one that's near me. It turned them into distribution centers for Walmart, and I'm guessing it's for their online yeah. stuff, very similarly to Amazon. So even though there might be some work shortages uh, or layoffs, you're still going to need people in those warehouses doing that work. So I think Walmart, they may be changing their model to try to uh, emulate Amazon more. Yeah. All right. Well, they're all tr- uh, yes, Jeff. Amazon is a pretty automated uh, factory. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure I'm sure their percentage of employees yeah. per dollar or whatever is very very low. Yeah. And what they what they continuously uh, spent their money was making their product 
lower cost, more products available, and instant success. And reliability. We have to add to that reliability. The reliability yeah. factor is number one. I know when I buy, and a second, Phil, when I buy from um, uh, uh, from Amazon, I have a certain assurance that if I don't like the product for any reason, I, I just don't like. I don't like the way it looks. I can get, send it back to them. Like I bought a sound bar, and then I bought another sound bar, and I wanted to send back the sound bar they sent me. No problem. I send it back. Cost me fifteen bucks because it wasn't broken, and they I had to take care of the shipping. But outside of that, I have an assurance that you know there's assurance, and also there's a speed of delivery. There is assurance of that delivery. They have changed something at, at Amazon, and nobody noticed this except for me in the last couple of days because I ordered quite a few things from them. You know the two day delivery. Yeah. If you don't ask for it, you don't get it. In other words, before it was just assumed two-day delivery. Now there's a little down thing down at the bottom that says change, and you click on that, and then it allows you to click on two-day. Otherwise, it'll be four days. Huh. Uh, but I, I what about if you're uh, Prime? If you're Prime, it's it's for, it, it 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 they do they they will tell you oh it's coming next Wednesday. But if you click on that thing and then go I want it two-day free two-day. You get it, but you have to ask for it now. I, I, I got it. Everything I order, it's usually a one day. Oh, oh I'll tell you, I'll tell you there, I think they do. Wait a minute, Phil, Phil's had his hand up here for quite a while, and in all fairness to him. Uh, look, uh, the other day I told you about my friend with the laundries uh, up in Reno. Now, in Reno is where Amazon just built their big distribution center, as well as Tesla, their battery business mm -hmm. and what happened to him is he couldn't he had to raise the wages to compete with amazon because amazon needed all of these employees uh to run in their distribution center and even though you think that a lot of it is automated it still was a big pull of of uh, manpower from that area you know reno it's a big big town he uh uh, and and I forgot what the other thing was I was going to say, but uh, that you know yeah. So that well, what, what I'm saying is is that uh, uh, again the one thing they have changed, and I thought it was just that maybe I was ordering something not from Amazon Prime, but I noticed I ordered somebody and said get there next Wednesday, and I went that's not two day service, and then mm -hmm. I looked and you hit a little a little kind of like oblong button and it says change, and you click on that and then you can say I want the free two day, and then. I, in fact, I went back and changed a couple of things, and so they're all, all coming Saturday. Yes, uh, Rob, <laughs> and then Mike. So I think what's going on there is because I'm also, and I ordered something this evening. I order a shit ton of stuff from them. I have not seen that. Everything says today right away. However, what they're trying with me, and I think what they do is they do test markets in different mm -hmm. places, and they try different things. Yeah. What they did with me was... They put a little notice there saying, hey, if you could deal with not having two day, we'll give you a free video rental or we'll give you free music or they, they're offering you some free thing. If you and I did it already, I was like, yeah, OK, I don't need this for, uh, you know, to be here in two days. Sure, I'll try it. So I think what they do is they do. You know, they're, they have many, many. Well, I, I, I mentioned this to girlfriend and she said, oh, it was always two day. And I go. Well, no, now you got to hit this change thing in order to get two day. Otherwise, it's like four days. Yeah, so I haven't seen that yeah. yet. Yeah, so, so what, what, if I want what they're doing is, is I think that they're doing so much business. They don't want, if they can possibly not have to do it in two days. They, well, I they, think it's, it's the same thing that's going on is they get you hooked. Yeah. And then start pulling shit away. Lowe's well, did they're it. Not, they're uh, not pulling it away. Both, you get the free two day, but you got to ask for it. You do right now, but if if, if yeah. enough people don't bitch about it, then they'll say, "Well, we're pulling away the two day free." You know, it's all about tolerance. They want to see how it affects yeah. sales. Now you, you say know, you order. You say play. you order one day, Jeff, a lot of times. All the time. Uh, but you have, to pay, you have to get, now. You have to pay. F what? How much more? Well, nothing because. If, well, no. It depends it, if you want because it, when when it's prime. Sometimes the price is higher. Now, what I also noticed, this was another thing. You know how you could always ask for one-day service? Mm 
okay, instead of two days. Two days is free. One day is another price. The price is higher than it used to be, and it varies on the item. Yes, I noticed. I noticed. So they, I oh, those are the things they've changed. I mean, they've done it very <clears throat> subtly, no, and nobody's complaining about it. We still love getting our stuff delivered to us. And not having to go to, you know, although I, I have to admit, I love buying my TV set at Costco, being able to bring it home, plug it in and watch it that day rather than wait for some guy to deliver it broken, you know. I, I can order stuff at night and pick it up in the morning. It's here. Yeah. It's here at my house. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe it. You have a distribution center probably. I guess. Yeah. I, I the other day, this is Lowe's, right? We have a Lowe's here about two miles up the road, and I'm doing a lot of work around the house. I'm we just I just hung a, a a flat screen TV on the wall, and I I put in this uh, this uh, device to hide the wires and stuff. So I I went into and I bought this tubing, and I ordered it because I friggin' hate going to these box stores because you could walk around aisle to aisle to aisle and you're there for 40 minutes. There's no one to help you. So I order online to pick up at store. I get an email that says said item is ready. I walk into the store and I'm standing around 30 minutes waiting for someone to bring me the fucking item. I was I, I you know, if you see the look on my face, I'm like, is somebody here? I, I didn't if I wanted to be here 30 minutes, I would have walked in and asked for the item. Then you said it was ready. Where is the item? This happens every time you do the go, go to the store to pick it up. It's never I, ready I never had that problem with Best Buy. With Best Buy, I uh, they said the items here. You went down, you went to a special window and you picked it up. And I always say to them, this is why Amazon is winning. Well, I'll tell what you something. I'll tell you the, the, great, the, the other great thing I mentioned this la last night in, in my monologue uh, about uh, uh, what do you call it? About uh, Amazon. I re I returned this uh, this um, sound bar because I decided to buy the one which was a little better at the Costco, and also I had the can't wait. So you know what the hell? So I returned this thing. I took it right down to UPS. Within two hours after I took it to UPS, I got a notification from Amazon, your, uh, your uh, uh, what do you call it, rebate or whatever, your uh, uh, refund, refund is being processed and should be uh, in your account from two to three days. Uh, was, they, yep. they, as, soon as, they, as soon as they barcoded it at UPS, it went to Amazon and Amazon. Pro I mean, they haven't even gotten the thing back yet. That's what I wanted to talk about, what's happening now with brick-and-mortar retailers. For instance, if you go to Nordstrom's, and uh, for the most part, if you want to bring something back, it, it's no questions asked. At my store, I, we have a written policy that if uh, you're unhappy for any reason, uh, after the material is installed, up to 120 days, pick something else, we'll replace it free, no questions asked, including labor. We have a special insurance policy uh, store, uh, nationwide that uh, we have to handle this. And I've had three or four customers say, hey, look, the carpet leaves footprints. I said, no problem. Pick something else. And uh, let's find something that doesn't leave footprints. I don't have to back up. I don't have to hem and haw. I just say, well, oh, you, you, you know, you really have guilty. to you really have to do that these days because huh? all because people are getting very used to that kind of service. I mean, Amazon mm -hmm. give yeah. you know, give Jeff Bezos who's an asshole his due. Jeff Bezos came up with a business that made people expect a certain kind of quality right. in that well, service. If, and if we put in ceramic tile for somebody and they don't like it, we'll rip it out and do whatever they put in what they want. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been amazed by the things I've been able to return and how easy it was. If you call Amazon, and you can call Amazon, you simply have to click there and then they call you, okay? Mm. Uh, you usually get somebody within a minute. It's not like you're sitting there waiting forever to talk to somebody at Amazon. I mean, the whole company has has a uh, it, it deserves the 82 percent of the business because they've gotten 82 percent confidence from people about buying from them 
But Plus, do you, you really want to go out. to Nordstrom's? You really want to go to Macy's? You really want to go to Toys R Us when you can right. sit at home, click, get a gift wrapped, right? Yep. And get all your stuff that you're giving people. for Christmas to people delivered to your home. You yeah, know, it, no that. muss, no fuss. Thank you, you don't very much. You pay the shipping to ship the gift. You don't even pay uh, for the shipping. Exactly. Uh, that Amazon, you said that, that one day service. So is it like what? A few dollars more? What? You ship a one day service? Yeah. One day service? Yeah. yeah. There's, an, so there's, there's a, a few more, uh, like a few more, like a couple of dollars more, isn't it? Yeah. The shipping. Well, some, some people are just lucky enough, like, like Jeff is, to be close enough to a distribution center that when you select two day shipping, it arrives in one day. Do you day. know that actually Amazon here in New York has on some items same day? Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. I got a book for once. I got it that night. Yeah, yeah, see? But if, but Shecky used to buy books and yeah. have them delivered to him at the Letterman Show, and it got there the same day. Yes, Patrick. You can track your package. I don't have time or anything like that. I just order from Amazon. But we have a distribution center. Uh, just two counties south of me, and I click three or four day free shipping, you know, because I'm usually over to 25 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And there's many days or many times that I've ordered where I've had it the very next day or two days. And that's why I haven't even bothered with Prime because I don't need it. Anything that I need it's here within two days, or if it is the four days, you know. Well, if you have Prime, of course, all your stuff is, all your deliveries are, are, are without extra charge, as it were. I mean, I've ordered a 99-cent gadget, and, you know, they, they, they sent it. It cost them more to send it to me than it cost for me, than they made as a profit out of me. But the yeah, fact yeah. is, the, the fact Quite is up. that they, they, they do this, and uh, what, what was the point I was trying to make? Um, uh, it is just amazing to me. The whole the whole operation is amazing to me. And I I've very hey, seldom ever gotten irritated with them. What are you looking at, Phil? Well, I I just tried to do what you said to do, but I didn't have to. What happened was uh, I I need some uh, rechargeable double A triple A batteries. Yeah. Double A. So mm -hmm. I I click on the thing. I go place the order. I go to the uh, to the cart and immediately it says choose your prime delivery option saturday january 13th free two-day shipping or monday january 22nd free no rush shipping and get five dollars towards your next point. see that's different than they're doing with me so they uh, he must be right uh, rob must be right they must be doing a different marketing in each yep. area to see which one I plays the best Yes. Well, I don't, but what I they're don't trying to do, what they're trying to do, is encourage people not to take two-day shipping now. Right. The only right. problem is I don't want toys, and I don't, and I don't want a game. Uh, I, you know, so uh, I wish they'd offer me something. Oh, else. I, what I was going to say is, if you get Amazon Prime, which is what a hundred dollars a year now, you get all that shipping free. Okay, but on top right. of that, you also get Amazon Prime if, at home for television. And, and so I you, use that. Uh, oh, yes, I do too. I love the shows on that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, on top of it, uh, they, they do give you some storage online, which I haven't taken advantage of. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I guess they give you some other stuff. It's you know? a good deal. It really is. Yeah, it is. It's on music. But, you know, Amazon is, is Costco, the... you got to pay a hundred and something dollars a year for the black card. Uh, you know, so... No, 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 Phil, 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 for the black card. I have the black card too, but you do get a, a, every year. You also get a check from yeah, them, which usually takes care of the price of that. Okay, yeah. Uh, so it's really nothing. It's but it's, for everybody else, it's like fifty bucks or something uh -huh. for for a Costco card, and it, it's it? well worth it. I'll tell you, we're seeing superbly run operations. Amazon is superbly run. Costco, although I, I've had some problems lately is still a very superbly run organization. Uh, when you think about the uh, the change makers in this country, Netflix is a change maker. By the way, rumor is Apple's trying to buy Netflix. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, they got so much cash. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would hate to see that happen. Okay. Me too. Well, I would Apple's hate to see a content that provider with uh, the music and, and so yeah, forth. Yeah, but they're, not, they're a content provider. They're a second party con uh, provider because they're selling albums made by somebody else. They're being sold through their store, so to speak. You can also get that music other places, too. Uh, well, Max, what they're doing they is they are going into original production now, and how they're going to work that, I don't know. Are you going to subscribe to it, or are you going to have to pay per episode? Well, you know? wouldn't it be something if, if, uh, if content providers could post on Netflix their videos and shows, and you could choose to download it if Apple used the same concept they're using with the music and did it with... Uh, with Netflix, uh, you kind of uh, well, why would why would you two. want to pay for each and every single thing you want yeah. to watch? Well, I'm not saying Thanks. you'd have to pay. It, it, well, yeah, you'd have to pay. That's their uh, expensive and everything. Now, if they yeah. buy Netflix and then they simply let Netflix be Netflix and you subscribe to, I pay I'm paying fourteen ninety nine a month now for Netflix because they get the four K service and they raised everybody two dollars. I also get Hulu for twelve bucks a month. With no commercials, uh, so it uh, you know I mean I'm paying over twenty five bucks now for those ancillary services, and of course there's Amazon Prime, but I also get my packages delivered. So and hey, and, and you accuse me of being a spendthrift. <laughs> well, I'm, I, listen, we all, we we're old people. We just sit at home watching television. Fuck you. Yeah, you know that's <laughs> that's all we have to watch. Yeah. What doesn't cost doesn't cost go. Charge you quite a bit for that black card. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like hundred and something. I don't remember exactly what it is. Uh, I thought they. I thought they raised it. I thought they raised the price up for some reason. They, they raised did. it. They yeah, did. I, I I don't remember because I usually renew it with the uh, coupon they give you, and you just pay. Right. The if I haven't charged, you know, I, thought, I thought everything went up for for Costco. All their membership, you know, the levels of their membership went up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it did. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, Costco, yes. yeah, they go up, you know. Uh, but that's that. You, believe it or not, that's how Costco makes their money. They don't make yep. their money off of selling you the items. The reason you're getting the items so cheaply, uh, at a reasonable price, is because they only make something like what did I hear? Ten percent on fifteen percent. Fifteen percent is on on everything in the store, so that. Uh, the, they make their main profit off of uh, those cards, and they have like I don't know how many gazillions of of, uh, of membership members, but it's a lot, and that accounts for their profit. You know, so I mean, fifteen percent on their volume is a lot of money. Huh? Uh, fifteen percent on their volume is a lot of money. I, I have no, you know. I have, I have no idea what Costco's uh, yearly volume is, but if you took 15% of that as gross profit, uh, I, I would say that's it's pretty profitable. It, it, well, it is very. But profitable. they pay, they pay they pay well, right? Know. And and stores that want that kind <clears throat> of service and that kind of loyalty will pay well, and you don't need to worry about a minimum wage. You need to worry about paying people that want to do the right thing and want to uh, give good customer service and have the uh, the the uh, uh, the attitude that uh, they're going to uh, make their company the best that it can be, and that's what's going to make America great again. So, well, uh, but they, it doesn't take a Donald Trump to do that. It takes a Jeff Bezos. It takes whoever started Costco. It takes the guys <laughs> who started Netflix. And I've got to tell you that um, under the current atmosphere, I don't know if we're going to see those anymore. I, I don't see, know if we're going to see small companies being able to become huge well, companies. Absolutely, because what he's doing is he's getting rid of all of those onerous regulations. No, that's bullshit. It, it, whether he gets rid of the <laughs> regulations or not, I don't think the atmosphere is out there. Too many people, too much of all the business out there has been consolidated into a few organizations. If you think of media, for instance, right now, you can only name in radio and television a handful of people who own those stations. Trump didn't do that. Trump, but Trump, is, Trump is encouraging that. He's encouraging. Uh, he's encouraging. Everything is just, it's like everything's getting mashed down into this big, Disney owns everything, you know? Uh, and 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 you're, we're going to allow them to own more. AT and T, what and what Disney doesn't own, AT and T owns. 
That goddamn mouse. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's... A very rich mouse. It, well, you know, when I think about Disney, if Disney, Disney were alive today, he, he wouldn't know what had happened to its company. You know, yeah. to him, it was, yeah. it, it was, it was uh, cartoons and, and, uh, and theme parks, and that was it. You know, and, and uh, he had a hard time keeping those open because he was going broke all the time. And now this company is the probably I guess, as a movie company they probably made more money last year than anybody I'm sure because they own more properties they own all the Marvel stuff they own all the Pixar stuff they own all the Star Wars stuff uh, soon uh, they're gonna what else did they just buy or what are they trying to buy right now oh yeah Fox did Fox. Sony's uh, package go into uh, you know uh, fall out of favor? Uh, didn't Sony have a, a big uh, presence in the movie business? No, they had Columbia Pictures. That was it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, uh, it, it, it's it getting to be... I, I was saying this last night uh, with uh, with um, uh, Barry Diller, with uh, Christian Amanpour interviewing him, talking about the fact that the f smartest man in the business is Rupert Murdoch, unloading Fox. And, and she said, why, you know? And he said, because those are businesses that are about to become antiquated. And he wants to get the best buck because he can get it right now. But if he waited a year or two, he wouldn't be able to get the best buck for Fox movies and FX and a couple of other properties. I, I, I got a question. You, you mentioned the name Diller. Uh, for some reason, in the back of my mind, was there a Diller that was married to Lucille Ball? No. No. Uh, who, who, was, who was her husband after uh, Ricky? Uh, it's an actor. Uh, what was his name? Forget it now. Uh, Moore. Wasn't no. It? Yeah, that's, yeah. I think you're right. Not Moore. Moore. Something. No. Yeah. Moore. Or not Gary no, Moore. No, but no. Uh, uh, who married uh, Lucy? Why I, a Diller. Uh, Mary. Lucy. Phyllis, Lucy. Yeah. No, I I know the actor's name and I just can't remember it now. Who married Lucy on Seventh Heaven? I don't want that. I just want the Lucy Ball. Okay, Lucy Ball. Lucy Ball's husband, Lucille Ball's husband. Who was married to Lucy Ball? Uh, let's see, Lucille Ball, uh, Gary Morton. Gary yeah, it's in Morton. I don't know where the hell. Mark, I well, wow, that's uh, okay. Yeah, she was married to Gary Morton. Um, you know, Desi though helped her get her fortune. Desi was brilliant, just brilliant. Everybody goes, oh, it, what? Wasn't he just the you know? hired hand on the show that he was everything he was desi lu and when you think of what desi lu came up with they came up with the untouchables right and the one yeah. thing they never get credit for is you ready lucille ball show huh lucille ball show no what like what were you saying wait what, what was Andy Griffin show? Was no Three no shoot. no I'm, I'm talking about another show that they that they brought into existence Dragnet. and produced dragnet uh no, fbi no, no none of those none of those ready yeah. star trek really yeah the first three three seasons of star trek were desi lu production oh. and then they become paramount for the ensuing years wow. because <laughs> because what? desi lu was bought by paramount because it was right next door well wow. did he want or uh, did he design where they can use like three cameras? No, he, well, I yeah, he he designed he designed the whole thing about shooting it on film, film as opposed to shooting it on videotape. Uh, and the reason he shot that way was because he also envisioned this was his genius that there would be a market for this stuff in years ensuing years, and if they did it on video, if they did it on kinescope, it wouldn't look as good or as clean or as clear. Uh, that's also what later on Gleason used a thing called the electronic cam process for the honeymooners. That's why they look so good to this very day. Uh, so those Lucy shows lasted, and then everybody started doing their shows before a live audience on film. A lot of shows were on film, but they didn't have a live audience. Uh, and uh, yes, he came up with that concept too. But I mean, he just was a genius. And uh, he, you know, that Desi Lu became probably the biggest producer in the in the business, uh, and they were amazing. Uh, and then they sold to Paramount, and you know, Lucy and Desi broke up, 
I think they sold because they broke up. Uh, did they sell because they broke up or did they just break up? Divorce. They, yeah. Yeah, I think it was divorce. It was divorce. Well, I'll tell you, they were an unbeatable combination for years and years and years. And yeah. uh, what and what they contributed to television was phenomenal. You know, so, I mean, in fact, I was watching, oddly enough, I was watching a Lucy show the other day that had been colorized. Uh, these, these prints are so good, you can colorize them, right? And I watched the damn thing, and I went, this was some pretty good shit. You know, I mean, they, they, she was good and the show was well written. And, you know, I don't think I could get through more than a couple of them. Uh, uh, you know what Trump said about that? What? He says they don't call them colorized anymore. Now they call them black people. See what I mean? He probably would say something. Well, didn't you have a lot of good writers? What does that mean? <laughs> These people have been blackified. <laughs> Yes, oh, Alex, I was watching an old movie for mother the other day. Yeah. That guy was in it uh, uh, from Jack Benny. Uh, Bruce Dismayan? Uh, what's his name? What? Uh, you mentioned him. Rochester. Rochester, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Eddie Anderson. Yeah, that was him, yeah. We Jack were watching Benny never treated them. Uh, like anything other than a quality person. You know, he, uh, uh, I understand that uh, when Jack Benny, uh, you know, worked with these guys, they were, uh, uh, there was no discrimination. There was no was discrimination. Nothing. And a lot of people say, well, the character of uh, Rochester was so subservient. But actually, if you watch those shows, he wasn't. Right. Benny was the butt of his jokes. Right. You know, exactly. Benny was not a comedian, he was a clown. And a clown yeah. is one who has the jokes pulled on him. And the, the jokes were always at his expense. And Rochester heaped a good portion of those on, on him. He was, he was the servant who, you know, went, this guy's fucked. <laughs> right. It was wonderful. This guy's the nut. I love Benny. that show. That's such a great show. If you watch yeah. Benny, they still last to this day. Yeah. It's it's still funny. phenomenal. In fact, he goes for his driver's license I was watching. <laughs> yeah. In fact, did... Uh, also, Benny treated everybody who came on the show. He gave them the top billing. No. Am I correct? No, he didn't. didn't he? No. No? No. It was always the Jack Benny program. But he helped the people. No. No? No. Do you mean he let them have the spotlight and, and yeah, yeah. shine through? On the yeah, he would exactly. always, it, no. it, it, but he knew how to use a guest. You have a guest on a show because you want them to work for you. Plus, right. he had good writers yeah. too. My favorite Benny, Benny had the best writers in the world, and they know how to write for that character. And the best thing, best joke I think I ever saw in that whole series was he's in a he's in a he's in a grocery store, and a kid comes up to him and says, "Hey, Mister, are you Jack Benny?" And he says, "Yes, I am." And he said. Um, Gee, uh, Mr. Benny, I, I play the violin. He says, oh, do you, you play the violin just like me? And he says, I used to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what oh. a absolutely beautifully constructed joke. You know, his writers were the best that, uh, that there ever were. Um, it, 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 uh, it, it, you got to go back and watch those Benny shows. And you suddenly realize you're watching one show after another and you're laughing your head off and there's not one dirty joke anywhere to be found. That's oh. all on Amazon Prime now. He's funny. Yeah, he's funny. Uh, is, it, is it really? Yeah. Where do they have them? I, I haven't seen mm -hmm. them. I don't know. I just found them. Uh, yeah. All these nostal all these old shows. Yeah, on they had the last episode. I just I just found this new sh the show that NBC has been running called uh, the, uh, the Good Place. Has anybody seen it? this thing about going to heaven? And oh, really? it's it's it, oh, it, yeah. it it's it's not bad. It's not bad. Huh? Anyway, hey, listen, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, all of a sudden, we got big numbers towards the end of the show. I don't know how this happened tonight. I guess we just became interesting to everybody. Either that, or was there a football game tonight, or something? Who knows? I want to thank you guys for being here tonight, especially uh, Phil uh, Meyer, who is our regular, and Jeff, who's a regular, and Patrick, who is a regular most of the time. And when he isn't regular, get out of the way because he's in a wheelchair. When he shits, it blows. And uh, uh, 
I don't know what that was supposed to mean, but it's a joke. I'll label it that way. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Thanks to Rob Alfano uh, this evening, and of course to the lovely and attractive. Tony. It's getting late, and Daddy has to go to bed. Thank you, everybody. Why don't you wave goodbye to the folks out there so they can see you in your countenance? Thank you for being with us this evening. Anyway, uh, let me let me see here. I got a what I wait a minute. I I I pushed the wrong button and I got my menus. No, that's not what I want. That's what I wanted. Oh boy, I can't even get out of the show with my with grace. Hey, listen. Uh, the, it's been fine out there tonight. The picture has been solid and it looked good. And so you didn't have me having to close it down like last night. And if it goes like this every night, I uh, mean, we've got the whole system for the video tuned up really good. Anyway, uh, next over most of the same station is the, uh, is the, uh, is, is, I'm trying to do everything at once here. I'm, uh, the chief bottle washer. Next is Jack and Amy with the intersection. At one o'clock, it's Connections uh, coming to you out of Florida. That's at uh, one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to take about uh, 22 hours off, get me a little sleep, uh, fix some more things, and then be right back here again with you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Bye.